Okay, back and answering more questions. Let's just dive right in. It's me again with another Screen Rant article. Okay, so I saw this the other day, and for me, it's very sus. First of all, the picture in the cover. Why is that Daryl from season five? Maggie and Negan are in their present timeline instead. Then in the article, as you can read, it says anything is possible even if Rick dies in the last episode. There's absolutely no way they're killing Rick off after all this time. It seems like they might be referencing Beth instead, who actually, who didn't actually die in Coda 2509. Let's see. The Ones Who Live, season two is in the cards. However, the spinoff appears to be intended as a six-episode mini- miniseries that will wrap up Rick and Michonne's love story for good. That being said, Gimple has left the door open for a second season, saying anything is possible, even if Rick dies. Okay, in the last episode of um, <laughs> of the, the Ones Who Live, specifically. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I agree that there's no w- way they're killing him off. I mean he's going to lead the CRM war. Like, that much is very, very obvious. But it's interesting that they say that because it's like they're saying there's a possibility of a death fake out. That's almost admitting that. Like, it might seem like he died, but did he really? (laughs) Or, like you said, it might be referencing Beth. I mean, there's a lot of conjecture that we might see her in the final episode because it's airing on Easter. Um, yeah, that's that's super interesting. And yeah, it's a good point about them showing season five Daryl for some reason instead of the current one. Um, yeah, I don't think I have a whole lot else to say about it, but I, I completely share your opinion that that's super suspicious and, and definitely interesting. So we'll have to see where they go with that. But if they did do a fake out for Rick, I, I mean, they, they really already did a big one in 905, but who's to say they couldn't do another one? But it also could be, and I think this is what you're getting at, it's like maybe a reference to somebody coming back who didn't actually die. So yeah, I definitely think that could be. And he's referencing the last episode, so that's that's definitely suspicious. So I'm suddenly excited for the finale of The Ones Who Live, you know? Um, all right. Hey, so I just watched the last episode of Daryl Dixon. I loved it. So much symbolism and parallels. I watched your video analysis about 106, and I don't think you mentioned the scene where him, Isabel, etc. burn the truck, and it's basically pretty much the same visual as in still when they burn the shack, and he was helping Isabel to walk away from that kind of like he did with Beth, so I thought it was very interesting. But honestly, I hope they're not setting up him and Isabel. They're not. Your analysis helped me to view how it can't be possible, but thing is, I'm pretty sure he's not leaving France yet since Laurent showed up. All those looks they exchanged really got me like, ugh. (laughs) But here's a small theory I got. Even if he gets or wants to get with Isabel, that would still be an upgrade from his very toxic relationship with Leah. Also, Isabel is not exactly like Beth. I do agree with you that she's more of a proxy for Carol, or maybe a mix of both in some ways. So maybe when Beth shows up, He's just going to pull in Abraham on Isabel. Okay, I I assume you mean Abraham from the show because... uh, Let me finish reading this and then I I do have something to say about this. Um, Last thing I swear, I know Carol was driving a Mustang at the end and I was watching it and maybe from afar it looks more like a cross than a horse logo, which is pretty interesting because that car seems similar to the one Beth got kidnapped from too. Anyway, can't wait for Daryl Dixon season two in the summer. Yes, okay. So, a couple of things here. I really don't think that they're doing a relationship with him and Isabel. I mean, yeah, it's technically possible. And if they were to do it, it would be something that was casual and very short term. But I really, I think they've already kind of closed the door on that. Um, But there was something that me and my fellow theorists were talking about just yesterday. Angel, the first one, did... um, uh, a meta that I reblogged that contributed to this, so you can go find that on my account, and it's really genius. But what we were ac- we were actually talking about, um, me and WD Way and uh, Gladriel Jones, is that we saw the number seventeen last week on. I want to say it was Michonne's watch. So remember when Rick was like doing the fake escape thing, but he was never planning to actually go see her. They kept looking at their watches, and Michonne said eight seventeen, and then Rick said nine p.m. Actually, maybe it was the other way around. Okay, I don't remember. I'd have to go look. But the point is, <laughs> we saw the 17 on the clock. And the thing is, the clocks at Grady, when they were ticking when Beth woke up, one of them was at 17 minutes. So 17 is something that we've seen more than once. And then um, one of them reminded me that we're missing 17 days after Beth disappeared in Coda. And Nicotero specifically told us that, and it's a weirdly specific number, okay? So I started thinking about that, and I was like, "Uh uh-huh, okay. Um, So 
the 17 days after Coda is literally what what came after when Beth disappeared. Now, well, then in season nine, we had Rick disappear, and that episode was called What Comes After. And it was that, that's almost like a question mark, what comes after. And it's like it's a mystery at that point, just like the 17 days after Beth went missing is still a mystery, right? But now that we've found Rick and Michonne and we have gotten the backstory on what happened to him, what came after from Rick's point of view has been revealed, right? Um, Another example of this theme is in season four, after the prison fell, the first episode right after that, it it was about Michonne and it was about Rick and Carl and it was just called After. Um, So then I read Angel the First One's... um, Meta, and she talked about how she had worked out the timeline, and she was pretty sure that Daryl's relationship with Leah, and specifically the part where they were watching the lunar eclipse together, happened in 2017. So um, here's what's important about that. I mean, obviously, there's the 17 again, where it's a number we keep seeing. But Gladriel Jones also pointed out that we have more than once talked about Daryl maybe being Jacob in the Bible, like a template of the Bible. And the reason for that is mostly because of Leah, because that's where, biblically, the reference comes from. Jacob fell in love with Rachel and wanted to marry her, but he was forced to marry the older daughter that he was not in love with first. And he had to marry her and work for seven years, and then it was another another seven years before, um, well, it was... So the way people tell the story, it was another seven years before he got to marry his true love, Rachel. Actually, if you look into the the details of the Bible, he probably married her a lot sooner than that, but he had to work seven years for her. So either way, he worked 14 years for his father-in-law, seven years for Leah, and seven years for Rachel. But a lot of people don't tell the story that way. They tell it as he um, had to wait 14 years to marry Rachel, which was his true love. So we've just conjectured before that maybe there's a little bit of a template going on there where Daryl is Jacob, and that's why... This first woman, he had a relationship. Her name was Leah. And then, obviously, Beth's name is not Rachel, but um, she's his true love, and he'll marry her later or, or be with her later, right? Anyway, the point is, according to The Walking Dead, the apocalypse started in 2010. And if the eclipse was in 2017, that's exactly seven years later. And then, from 2017 to present day, which is 2024, that's another seven years. So, if Galadriel Jones is right about that, and I think that's a genius theory that would mean that we would have to see her this year beth and that we'll finally get daryl's relationship with his true love now obviously all conjecture we don't know for sure that that's the case but it's something that we've been talking about and we were just talking about it yesterday so um when you talked about him having a relationship with leah and that isabel would be an upgrade i mean yeah i agree that she would be she wasn't nearly as toxic as leah but i don't think they need to give him another relationship i mean if we're following that template there won't be another one until his true love arrives which is beth um the other thing is then you said abraham and i was thinking biblically so (laughs) i kind of tripped on that um so anyway just something to think about and it's super super interesting but go read angel the first ones uh meta on that and then um I think Gladriel Jones might have one on Jacob. I'm pretty sure she does. I'll see if I can find it and link it in the show notes. Anyway, okay, so then this, the last thing that you answered um, about the car. Yeah, we actually did think that the car was probably a reference to Grady. Um, the horse logo, I mean, we've actually seen horses as symbols before, so there's that. Um, but, yeah, it, it does seem a lot like the Grady car. And the, the thing is, I've said this a million times, but... The Book of Carol is going to be Daryl and Carol together again, and I think it's going to follow the template of season five, which means even though they're not actively looking for Beth because they don't think she's alive like they were in season five, it's still going to be very similar to that, and it's going to end with them finding her. Like, I I 100% believe that that's what it is. And Carol needed to be there before they could do that storyline where Daryl finds Beth because... That's the way they set it up in season five is Daryl and Carol together looking for Beth. So um, it would make a lot of sense that her car that she was in is reminiscent of the Grady car that took Beth because this is the beginning of replaying that story. So I think you're right about that. Okay, that was a long answer. (laughs) I hope that that helped and it probably got all your wheels spinning. All right, let's go to the next one. Saw the Luna Love question you answered, and I wanted to say that I'm on a Discord server with her, and she posted a picture she took with EK around October. Apparently, she went to watch and su- and support Emily's music concert. 
took a look at her features and she's blonde like Emily, same height, quite similar nose shape, similar skin tone color. But Luna Love looks slightly tanner and I guess same weight judging from the photo I saw, but different eye color shape and I think complexion. Maybe she is EK's friend, which is plausible because she's very friendly and gets along with everybody, but I think Luna might have been EK's stunt double or something. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know that I can really say much about that because I have no idea, but um, that would that would be super interesting, wouldn't it, if it turned out that they knew each other like that and she was her stunt double. And that makes sense if she looks similar enough to her that she might have been, so... And who knows, maybe they're still hanging out because they've been doing work together again for some reason. You know, you never know. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for sending that in. That's that's actually super interesting. Um, what's your most favorite Beth moment and what Beth or TD-esque fan fiction would you recommend for us to go take a look and read that takes place post-coda? Um, unfortunately, I, I really don't read a lot of fan fiction. I'm sorry. I wish I did. I wish I had the time. But I... I don't really have the time to do that. I write my own fiction. I'm literally running like three businesses and I work full time. So I just don't have the time to look into fan fiction. So I'm sure it's all fantastic, but I, I couldn't really give you a recommendation. In fact, I've had people asking me to write fan fiction and I keep telling them that I will and I've just never gotten around to it. So I can't really give you a recommendation there. Um, my most favorite Beth moment. I, I have a hard time choosing just one. Um, it would probably be anything with Daryl, right? <laughs> and especially still. I I still get completely... I don't watch it very often, only every so often, every once in a while. It's been a long time since I watched still. But when I do, I still get like completely transfixed by it. Like I'll just find myself just like staring and can't tear my eyes away and all that. So it would probably be um, maybe the Moonshine Jack with Daryl. I, again, I don't know that I have a favorite, but we'll just we'll pick that one and go with it. Do you think there will be CRM Rick and Michonne merchandises and updated Beth as well whenever her reveal happens? Yeah, I'm sure there will be. I mean, they're not going to waste an opportunity to make some money on some merchandise, so I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, and I think as they create this big narrative and go into the next phase of the story, even beyond the spinoffs and going into, into the CR war, they're going to ha have a lot of opportunities for things like that. I think the show is going to really surge in popularity, which we've seen. I mean, Daryl Dixon had the best ratings of anything ever in TWD universe. And I don't know if the ones who live are, is doing better than it, but even if it's not, it's really a close second. Like it's getting really, really awesome ratings too. So people are, loving the spinoffs and it just goes to show that one of the main reasons that viewership of the flagship show fell off is because it wasn't about the main characters anymore there were so many other characters coming and going and we didn't see as much of the main characters rick and michonne both left you know, you know what i mean so as we get these spinoffs that are specifically about the main characters we love everybody's watching them right so yeah i'm sure there will be merchandise i mean i i couldn't say anything with authority but i don't see why not so Let's um, stop there for this one, and I will be back uh, in a day or two with more. Bye, guys.